Okay, Rich Cordray. I want to do this interview in good faith, but I just need to get something out of my system before we begin. <sighs> you're a filthy regulator. You're an enemy of the American businessman. Filthy, filthy, awful, disgusting. Ah, I can't believe I'm sitting down across from you. I'm not sure what to make of that. That guy I'm talking to, that's Rich Cordray. He ran the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau an unnecessary bureaucratic agency that Obama created in 2010. Why? Well, he thought that the free market and the banks needed regulation just because they caused a recession and screwed over millions of people. Unbelievable. Unimaginable. Undi oh, totally gross. But then Trump took over, put a guy in charge named Mick Mulvaney, and stripped the CFPB of a lot of its power. Sweet. So sweet. The sweet. Come on, guys. The sweetest nectar. So now I'm going to eviscerate Rich Cordray because I have a lot of unaddressed insecurities and open wounds inside of me that make me take things out on other people. Let's do this. Hasn't the free market proven that it can regulate itself? Well, I think the financial crisis decisively refuted that notion. But aside from that, haven't they shown that they can regulate themselves? They blew up the economy. There were millions of people lost their homes, millions of people lost their jobs, and we all lost trillions of dollars in retirement savings. That's not a very good uh, economy at that point. Debatable? I don't think that's debatable. Doubtful? Uh, no. Questionable? I think it was questionable practices. We also took actions against companies that had violated the law, and we put back $12 billion in the pockets of 30 million Americans. There were hundreds of actions that added up to that total. Uh, some of the biggest ones were against credit card companies that had uh, sold people products by misleading them. Okay, that was confusing. Let's unravel it. Where did that $12 billion come from? Under Cordray, the CFPB helped save people from predatory debt collectors, exposed fraudulent practices at student loan companies, and reined in manipulative payday lenders. But the worst part is, he forced the sweethearts at Bank of America and Citibank to pay back over $700 million each because of innocent mistakes like misleading consumers and so-called deceptive credit card practices. You're an advocate for protection. I think people deserve to have somebody standing up for them and making sure that they're protected. But everyone knows it feels better without it. <laughs> I'm not sure what you're referring to. You know what I'm saying. Don't make me say it. Don't make me say it. Please don't make me say it. I want to say it. Do you want me to say it? <laughs> I can't say it. I'm going to write it down. You want me to write it down? Oh, I'm going to write it down. Oh, you're making me write it down. Oh, no, I said it. I wrote it down. Man, that was sexy. I can't help myself. But you know what's not sexy? Cordray actually created a system where consumers could report problems they had with banks. What a gross waste of time. Nobody complains about banks. We had over 1,300,000 complaints during my time there. Were some of the complaints, hey, you're being unfair to bankers? I don't remember complaints of that kind, no. So I remember a field hearing where this uh, elderly woman stood up and said that she had a problem. And the problem was that the credit reporting companies thought that she was dead. And there was nothing she could do to get them to change their mind and fix her files. And that was an example to me of how people felt they weren't being treated with dignity and respect. So did you kill her? No, we tried to get her credit file fixed so that uh, she could be getting loans like any other person. Seems like Cordray had a message for Wall Street. Stop misleading consumers. But when Trump took over, he had his own message for Cordray. Uh, there were calls for me to be fired every day. Republicans in Congress were trying to get me held in contempt of Congress and were having me investigated. So how did Trump fire you? Uh, he didn't fire me. That's too bad. Was it tough to get fired? I'm sorry, what did you say? Well, there were a lot of people calling and would fire me, but I let them know that I would file a lawsuit if they did and they'd have a fight on their hands and they never wanted to do that. So you weren't fired? Correct. You stepped down? I did. Hmm. That makes me enjoy that a little less. Moving on. And who took over for Cordray? Mick Mulvaney. Finally, a straight shooter that openly admits he only talks to lobbyists that put money in his wallet. During a recent meeting with bankers, Mulvaney said, if you're a lobbyist who never gave us money, I didn't talk to you. If you're a lobbyist who gave us money, I might talk to you. Simple, straightforward, awesome. I think it's disgusting, which to me uh, shows a real deep misunderstanding of what government's about in terms of serving the people. You're a private citizen. You can't do anything about it anymore. Well, I have a voice. I can criticize things that I think that are wrong. And I'm running for governor of Ohio to be able to stand up for Ohioans for fairness the same way I did as the head of the Consumer Bureau. So it's kind of like you're moving back home, which is sad. Ooh, ooh, oh, sorry. Okay, hold on. I got to take this call. <laughs> Hello? I owe how much? 
Uh, yeah, in that case, let me find a credit card that isn't maxed out here. No, I swear, yeah, I'll call you right back. This is the, this is the number that's, uh, okay. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, you were saying? So good luck, Ohio. If you want to protect your consumers, I guess Rich Cordray is your guy. I mean, that's not my style, but wait. Wait a minute, where am I? Am I in Cleveland? Oh my God, I've been walking for like five hours. Shit. Hey, Jordan. Hey, it's Tim. Tim Baltz from the show.